Hey, this is Kyle with Thermal Corporation. Today we're going to talk about a question that we get asked often, and that is how much wattage um, is needed in a heater. So that's a pretty complex question, but we're going to discuss a couple of basic concepts that will kind of get you pointed in the right direction and help you out. So if you know what size heater you need to fit on your machine or process or whatever you're using, really what you need to do is a pretty simple energy balance. So energy in equals energy out. So the energy in being put into your system is going to be whatever the wattage of the heater is. So that's what we're trying to solve for. Energy out is going to consist of two parts. That's going to be the energy that is lost to the environment, that's just radiated into space, um, plus the energy that is actually put into the process, into the material, into whatever you're trying to do. So to get the waste heat or the waste energy, um, there's a variety of graphs readily available online. And they'll basically give you for a given temperature and surface finish um, what the combined convective and radiative heat losses are. And that will often be in watts per square inch. So we've got this heater. We know the size. We know what temperature we're going to be running at. We can look at one of those graphs and say it's going to lose three watts per square inch to the atmosphere. Well, then we just calculate our surface area of our heater, multiply that by three, and that's the amount of wattage that's going to be lost to space. So then we need to determine how much energy is going to go into our process. Um, and that is often a little more complicated, but there's a relatively simple formula that you can use, and that is mass times a specific heat times the change in temperature divided by the time. So let's say we want to heat a chunk of plastic that weighs 20 kilograms. We want to heat that up by 20 degrees C and we want to do that every minute. We plug in all of those numbers and that will give you a wattage. So you then take that calculated wattage, add it to the wattage that you got from your waste heat from the graph and that's the wattage that you need in your heater and that will usually get you pretty close. Um, a couple of notes, it's always a good idea depending on the size of your heater and if you can do it to add about 15 to 20 percent more wattage and that's for a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, that calculation is not exact so you may actually need more heat than you calculated and also you don't want a heater to be running um, all the way on all the time. You want the heater to have short cycle times and be running 75 to 80 percent of the time. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind is startup time. So the calculations that I just discussed is really really for just a steady state process that's already at temperature operating pretty smoothly. Um, if you need a short startup time or if you have to bring a material from room temperature up to high temperature very quickly that's going to require more wattage. You can use that same formula and you'll get a higher wattage, but then you'll have less of a run time, so there's a, a balance there. But that's kind of the gist of it. Um, hopefully that gets you pointed in the right direction. If you have any questions, always feel free to call us, to email us. Um, we're happy to discuss your application with you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out all of our social media links, and we thank you for watching this video.